Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Mr. White and this is your first world history video lecture of the school year. Now you may want to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm going to be posting other videos of lectures and test reviews and just other cool stuff that you might be interested in. Uh, so, you know, just go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you want to stay up to date on all the newest world history videos. Uh, now, today's lecture is going to have a short video quiz that will follow. So make sure that as soon as you're done with the video lecture, you go right down below in the information section of this video and complete the video quiz, okay? Now, these video lectures are designed to be kind of like a lesson that you would do in class. So just like you do in class, you're gonna to need to take good notes and pay close attention as I go through the information, okay? Now, uh, without further ado, I suppose we should just go ahead and get right down to business. Let's talk about today's lesson. Um, Today's lesson is going to be turning back the clock quite a long way. We're going to the beginning. 10,000 years ago. Hmm. What was happening back then? Well, this was a time period known as the Neolithic Revolution. The Neolithic Revolution was when humans learned to control their food supply by farming and raising animals. Before the development of agriculture and the domestication or taming of animals, People lived in small tribes that had to hunt and forage for food. Back then, there were probably fewer than half a million humans on Earth. People could only live with a small number of other individuals, maybe 10 to 25 close family members and extended family members at the most, because hunting and gathering alone cannot provide enough food and calories for a group much larger than that to survive. Humans were nomadic during this time. When the seasons changed or the food ran out and the animals migrated away, the people had to move for survival. Under these conditions, it was nearly impossible for complex cultures to exist. Not to say that there was no culture at all during this time. People had already developed spoken languages. They were wearing simple clothing and using tools and other technology like fire and they even created murals on cave walls, like this one, to express their ideas and communicate information about their world. This was what we call the Paleolithic Age. You've probably heard it called the Stone Age. The changes we're gonna to discuss today happened during the Neolithic Age. Around 8,000 BCE, people in an area known as the Fertile Crescent, modern-day Turkey and Iraq, developed a new way of life that would transform humans and the planet Earth forever. These people discovered that they could control their food supply by domesticating animals that they hunted and planting the seeds of wild plants that they gathered. Humans had to give up the nomadic ways of hunting and gathering to tend their crops and livestock. When people stopped moving around, they became what we call sedentary, and the world's first towns and villages were established in fertile areas, usually near major rivers like the Tigris, Euphrates, and Nile. This new way of life caused a population explosion. In a very short time, the world's human population doubled, and then it doubled again. It's estimated that after the development of agriculture, the world population went from fewer than half a million individuals to well over two million people worldwide. Now, as you can imagine, pretty much every aspect of human life changed as a result in the way that we changed our food production. Now, the easiest way to remember all these changes brought about during the Neolithic Revolution is through an acronym called SCAR. Now, SCAR, don't look at me that way. No, not that Scar, not from The Lion King. Shut it off to my little friend! No, not Scar Face. Okay, listen. Scar. S-C-A-A-R. It stands for Specialization of Labor, Complex Institutions, Advanced Cities, Advanced Technology, and Record Keeping. Go ahead and write that one down. Now, to understand how these major changes manifested themselves in farming societies all around the world, we're going to take a look at a few specific examples to go along with each letter of SCAR. You may want to write these examples down in your notes 
and make sure you pay close attention because there will be questions about them on the video quiz coming up next. The S in SCAR stands for specialization. This means that people started to specialize or become experts in different specific jobs or tasks. This wasn't possible before the invention of agriculture during the Neolithic Revolution. All the extra food provided by farming and domestication meant that as populations became larger, fewer people were actually needed to produce the food. This resulted in more people having time to perfect old inventions and even develop brand new ones. For the first time in human history, people could actually have jobs other than just hunter or gatherer. To understand these jobs, we're going to go to South America, where there was a powerful ancient civilization known as the Chavin. These people built their society on one of the most extreme environments on Earth, the Andes Mountains. Chavin engineers carved out the sides of mountains to create terraces for farming and building. Chavin masons built fantastic stone buildings along these terraces. To communicate quickly, they built roads. They even had artisans who could produce delicate jewelry and brightly woven cloth to decorate their bodies. Chavin farmers were able to produce enough food that some people could actually train to become things like engineers and architects and artisans who devoted their lives to pursuits other than food production. This is what we call specialization. The Chavin also had priests who communicated with the gods, warriors who defended the cities, and of course a class of noble chieftains who kept order and ruled the society. These jobs were reserved for only a small fraction of the population. Most Chavin people were simple farmers or maybe artisans. As you can see, the Chavin had lots of specialization in their society. Without farming, all of these people would have had to spend their entire day looking for food. This leaves little time for carving stone buildings or performing ceremonies to please the gods. The C in SCAR stands for Complex Institutions. Now, you may be saying, Mr. White, what the heck does that mean? Well, a complex institution means any group or organization that lasts for a long period of time and gives structure and value to society, okay? As a matter of fact, you guys all are a part of a complex institution right now. You're all part of high school. That's a complex institution. If you are part of a church and you're a Christian, that's a complex institution. If you're a Muslim and you go to mosque, once again, that's a great example of a complex institution. Organized religion is one of our best examples of complex institutions. Now, as people began to specialize in different types of jobs during the Neolithic Revolution, new organizations and institutions naturally began to form and develop. Two of the most important institutions that shaped people's lives then and now were the government and religion. These institutions were so important that, in fact, some societies actually combined them together. They had a unity of church and state instead of a separation of church and state like we have. Now, the best example of this can be found in ancient Egypt. In Egyptian culture, the king, or pharaoh, was considered to be a living god. He was the earthly manifestation of Egypt's most important deity, Ra, the sun god. As a living god, the pharaoh was not only the head of the Egyptian government, he was also the supreme leader of their religion. Pharaohs made laws and led troops in battle, but they also presided over important religious ceremonies as a part of their regular duties. This is what you call a theocracy, when government and religion are one. The people in Egypt believed that it was vital to the health of their country for the pharaohs to carry out their duties successfully. If the pharaoh failed, the gods would become angry and cause things like droughts, disease, invasions, and other disasters to happen in the land of Egypt. When the pharaoh died, his funeral was a pretty big deal. Such a big deal, in fact, that some of the oldest and most remarkable buildings on the face of the earth the Great Pyramids of Giza, were built as tombs for the pharaohs. Now, I know these things are huge and it might look like 10 pharaohs could be buried in them, but keep in mind, 
there's only one pharaoh buried in each pyramid. Like the kings of other ancient societies, when the pharaoh died, power passed on to one of his children, usually his eldest son. However, believe it or not, Egypt had some female pharaohs, such as Nefertiti, Hatshepsut, and of course, Cleopatra. The pharaohs ruled Egypt for nearly 3,000 years. You won't find very many better examples of a complex institution than that. The trickiest part of SCAR to remember is the A's. There's two of them, and they both start with advanced. The key is to remembering the second part. The first one is advanced cities. The second one is advanced technologies. Let's start off by talking about advanced cities. This letter of SCAR is probably the easiest to understand because you all live in one of our civilization's advanced cities. An advanced city is a large settlement. Trade happens there. People from many different places come into contact with one another and ideas spread quickly. As these new ideas emerge, they diffuse from these cosmopolitan centers. Advanced cities also have permanent buildings, roads, and other infrastructure that make life more efficient and comfortable. Cities are the economic, social, and political heart of any civilization. Houston definitely meets these qualifications, and many cities in the ancient world did too. One of the best examples can be found in the Indus Valley, near modern-day India and Pakistan. Let's go check it out. The Indus civilization flourished there for thousands of years. Those people are best remembered for their remarkable sophistication of their urban centers. Archaeologists have discovered the ruins of hundreds of settlements in this area, but none are as spectacular as the cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro. Both cities had large populations, maybe as large as 50,000 people. Now, today that's not very big, but 3,500 years ago, it would have made them two of the largest cities on Earth. These cities were carefully planned, with streets laid out in a grid pattern to make navigation easier. The houses were built of brick, and some were three stories tall, but the most remarkable thing about these homes was found inside. Citizens of Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa enjoyed indoor toilets that carried wastewater to drains beneath the city streets. From there, it washed away to sewers outside the city. They also had public wells where citizens could fetch fresh water for drinking, washing up, or cooking food. There were even public trash bins to keep the city clean. Now this might not sound too impressive to you, because you've grown up in a society where indoor toilets are the norm, but this was cutting edge thousands of years ago. As a matter of fact, it was cutting edge until not that long ago here too. Just consider that homes in the U.S. didn't have indoor toilets until the early part of the 20th century. All bathroom stuff aside, these cities were also major centers of trade. Indus merchants traveled to other civilizations like Mesopotamia and Egypt to buy and sell goods such as spices, fabric, and precious stones. We know about this trade because Indus merchants used clay seals as a sort of ancient receipt. When you purchase something from them, such as a bull, you got the seal as a proof of purchase. Archaeologists have found these seals in other places, far away from the Indus Valley. Proof of the first international trade in the ancient world. The second A in SCAR is for advanced technology. And in the ancient world, no one had better technology than the Chinese. So for this example, we're heading to the Far East. Back then, approximately 3,700 years ago, China was known as the Shang Empire. Shang artisans possessed an advanced technology that few other early civilizations had mastered. The Shang could create tools and weapons from bronze. Bronze isn't just a third place medal in the Olympics. It's a metal alloy made from mixing copper and tin, and it was one of the very first metals to be used by humans. Bronze technology was also being used in Mesopotamia during this time, but the casting techniques used by the Shang were far more advanced. Shang artisans could mass produce high quality weapons like bronze swords, spears, and arrowheads to 
give their soldiers a huge advantage over their enemies on the battlefield. Shang priests used bronze to craft beautiful ceremonial vessels for use in their religious ceremonies. Even average peasants in the Shang civilization used bronze dings, or cooking pots, to prepare food each day. You may be wondering why using metal is so advanced. I mean, we use it all the time, right? Well, to make bronze, you must first locate rocks with large amounts of copper and tin. Then, you have to smash the rocks into tiny little pieces. Next, you have to have a special oven called a crucible that can get hot enough to melt those little pieces of rock. We're talking around 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, you have to create special molds from sand or clay. Then you pour in the molten bronze and try not to burn your hands off to create the object. Once it cools, the object must undergo further shaping and staining and polishing before it can even be used. So as you can see, this was no easy task. Casting bronze required skilled artisans and various forms of advanced technology. The R in SCAR is for record keeping. Record keeping is really important to complex civilizations because it allows them to pass down their ideas, traditions, and technology from one generation to the next. Now, as a matter of fact, I think that the ability to accurately pass down ideas over time is one of those great things that distinguishes us humans from other animals on this planet. It's kind of what makes us special, right? So, I tend to think that record keeping is probably one of the most important elements of SCAR. Now, to really investigate this final aspect of SCAR, we're going to travel to where civilization is thought to have began. The oldest known civilization on Earth, Mesopotamia. In the Mesopotamian Kingdom of Sumer, people developed an early form of writing known as cuneiform. This system of writing started out nearly 5,000 years ago as a system of small pictures that were pressed into soft clay tablets in vertical rows. Eventually, these pictures were simplified into phonetic characters made up of wedges that could be pressed into soft, nearly dry clay tablets using a reed stylus. The clay would then be dried in the sun to create written information that would last for a very long time. Cuneiform is not the oldest system of writing in the world but it is widely studied because of the vast number of cuneiform tablets found in Mesopotamia. The people who recorded information on these tablets were known as scribes. Most scribes were men who came from wealthy families because education was expensive and generally not available to women. Scribes were employed by merchants, priests, and even the king to write down important information. The Sumerians also recorded one of the world's oldest legends, the Epic of Gilgamesh, it's the story of an heroic half-man, half-god named Gilgamesh who becomes king and goes on a quest looking for immortality. Writing was very important in Sumer. Therefore, scribes and people who were literate enjoyed high social status as some of the most important people in the civilization. Many scribes went on to hold powerful positions in the government and religious institutions of Sumer. The Sumerians wrote about everything they did in their daily life almost like we do today with blogs and social media. As a result of the Sumerians' prolific record-keeping, historians have a wealth of primary sources about life in this ancient civilization. Kind of makes you wonder, what will historians 5,000 years from now think about our civilization when they look at the records that we've left behind? Alright guys, that's it. Now you know Scar. It's the easiest way to remember all of those important changes that happened as a result of the Neolithic Revolution, the invention of agriculture, and the domestication of animals. Okay, so now that we've gone over each letter of SCAR, let's real quick run through those letters one more time, make sure that everybody knows what they mean, right? S is for specialization, right? Meaning that people had different jobs. What's the C? Complex institutions, right? those organizations that last a long time and give structure to society. Okay, we got two A's. The first one is advanced cities, right? Okay, meaning they had big places where lots of people lived. They did cool stuff like they had toilets. Eh, not too bad. And the other A is advanced 
technology, right, you know, think like how they had bronze and other cool inventions that made life easier. And then the final one, the reason why we even know about this stuff is what are record keeping? Yeah, excellent, we just went over that. Meaning that they wrote down their thoughts and ideas so that future generations could benefit from them. Okay, so now that you've gone through the whole video and you know all about SCAR, remember that the next step is you need to take a video quiz. Follow the link located right below here, right, down in the information. Take the quiz, it's for a grade. And also, make sure that you bring those notes with you to class. You're going to need those notes to complete an in-class activity, okay? So, uh, if you have any questions about this video, feel free to post them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Uh, otherwise, remember to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I hope you come watch more of my videos. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.